When you do these long flat distances, boredom can set in. On particularly lonely stretches, I sometimes start playing road games, like swerving between the white lines. The body can also get a bit stiff on a long stretch. I find I tend to get pins and needles in my fingers and alleviate this by doing motorcycle yoga. I lean forward and back, stretching my back and arms. I also loosen the grip of my throttle hand and sometimes ride with my left hand free just to get some movement happening. All through South Australia I've seen these stupid hi there signs warning people that if they take drugs and drive they will be caught. They are always on the most remote desolate stretches where there wouldn't be a cop for miles. I'm sure somewhere in the state a van full of travellers are lighting up every time they see the sign mocking its absurdity. I decided to visit Cactus, the famous surf break I'd read about in magazines when I surfed. Surfers used to live out here in makeshift huts. It was a real counterculture hotspot back in the 70s. Now it's all flushing toilets, showers and firewood barbecues. I met Ron who has lived at Cactus for 40 years, running the campsite for the last 30. As I told him about my trip, he had that twinkle in his eye of someone stoked to see someone living an adventure. He had the weather-worn face of an outdoorsman, broken blood vessels lining his cheeks like the tributaries of a river system. That is the thing with people who live adventurous lives. They never look like the pretty boy heroes of Hollywood. They wear their experiences on their face, a bent nose, scars, furrows and ruddy colour. He said of travel, it's all about the people and sometimes you meet the good people in the bad countries and the bad people in the good countries. I knew exactly what he was talking about, remembering a time I was stuck at a New Mexico truck stop after being dropped off by a bus. I was hoping to hitchhike the 10 kilometres to Santa Fe instead of having to walk in the searing midsummer heat. After asking every vehicle that pulled into that service station over two hours and hearing every excuse in the book, I ended up getting a ride with a Mexican illegal immigrant who had swum the Rio Grande as a 12-year-old, his brother's Albuquerque address hidden in his boot. Ronaldo now had a family and ran his own successful business, and the only reason I got to know his story is because Michael Jackson's Beat It came on the radio, and it was the first song he'd ever heard in the USA. I read about a guy who rode a DR650 around West Africa with a surfboard. I'm playing with the idea of attaching racks for my trip from Perth to Broome. This stretch of coast has some epic left-handers, and as a goofy foot, who mainly had to contend with right-handers on the Victorian coast, this would be a dream. To be able to pull into barrels or actually face a wave instead of having my back to it. I measured up a 7-2 foot board. The length and old surface suggested I should try now, given the length of my own girth and the length of time I'd been out of the water. That night, my neighbours invited me over to their fire for a beer. They figured being on a motorbike, cold beer would be a luxury I'd enjoy. And they were spot on. Two young guys from Adelaide, over for the surf, having a break from family and work. An older couple joined our fire and cooked up some delicious slow-cooked potato wedges. There is something about staring into a fire that is quite primeval. It seems to lull people into talk slows things down to a normal conversational level without all the instant bells and whistles of social media.